Welcome back to Life Group. I'm glad you joined us again. Now, by now, you're probably getting to know the people in your group a lot better, and that's a great thing. You know, the Christian life is full of ups and downs, and boy, when it is up, it is good. Things are fitting together. It seems like there's so much purpose in our lives and significance. And then all of a sudden, a storm blows in, and it leaves us dazed and confused. Uh, one of the toughest storms to ever have to go through in life is the loss of a loved one or a friend or someone dear and near to our hearts. And it leaves us frustrated. It leaves us angry, mad at the whole situation. It's kind of like trying to put a puzzle together. I'm not a big puzzle guy. I just don't have the patience for it. But when you're putting a puzzle together and you start realizing you're missing a few pieces, man, that gets real frustrating, doesn't it? Because you've worked so hard to get everything in order and then you're not going to be able to finish it and there won't be this beautiful puzzle that you put together because you're missing pieces. That's kind of how we feel whenever tragedy strikes in our lives. It's like, where's the missing pieces? I can't put this together to where it makes sense in my life. There's no beautiful ending, no perfect picture. And the danger in those situations is we begin to question God's goodness. And that can be a very dangerous place to be. Because the fact is, even though we experience tragedy and pain, and I know you don't like to hear this, but the fact is God has a purpose for the pain in our lives. God doesn't cause bad things to happen, but he does allow bad things to happen to us. And when we question his goodness, we're questioning the very nature and character of God because God is good. God is just. But here's something that might surprise you. God is not fair. I know, it sounds strange to even say. But think about it for a moment, and I think you'll agree with me that that's a good thing. See, God is not fair to me. If he were fair to me, I would already be dead and in hell because I'm a sinner, and that's what I deserve. But through God's goodness, through God's kindness, mercy, and grace, he's forgiven me of my sins for no good reason I can understand at all. So I'm glad God's not fair, but here's what we must understand. God is good all the time. That is his quality. That is his nature. That is a characteristic of God. This also might help you. God has experienced grief as well. How do you think he felt when he saw his only begotten son beaten, hung on a cross, and die? What about Jesus? Did he ever experience grief? All you have to do is read John chapter 11 and you'll see that one of his very best friends died. And when he came on that scene of mourning with all the family and friends who had gathered to mourn, it says that Jesus wept. He has felt the pain that you feel and yet he revealed to us even in that story in John chapter 11 that there is purpose and there is peace in the midst of the pain. And that's what we're gonna to do tonight. Hopefully through sharing with your group and doing the explore it and share it time, you'll learn to embrace the purpose behind the pain and embrace God's peace in the pain you're experiencing right now. Now right now, maybe um, this whole lesson and session 
you think, well, it's really not for me. I, I'm not really grieving. But you will. And you'll need to remember what you're going to learn here tonight. Also, maybe you're in a position where you could really speak some healing into someone's life that is experiencing the deep pain of grief. So here's my challenge to you before we get started. Be open, okay? Be honest. God already knows how you feel. You're not going to surprise Him, so share with your group openly. Maybe you're angry at God. Maybe you're bitter towards God for what's happened in your life. Talk about that. Open up because that's one of the first steps down the road to healing is to admit that we have anger, we have bitterness even towards God in our hearts. Listen, God's not going to turn you away for those feelings. As a matter of fact, if you open up, He'll draw near. He'll be there for you. Because whether you realize it or not, whether you can feel it or not, God is with you in the midst of this pain. Now it's time to apply some of what we've learned. And I want to thank you for going through the share it and the explore it portions with your group. It'll start you down the road to healing. I'm not pretending that this one session is going to just get you over whatever grief you're experiencing. It's not usually like that. So don't get me wrong. But here are some things that you can do right now this week to get through the grieving process the way that God would intend you to. Number one, stop blaming God. It does no good to continually question God's goodness. Just like last week we learned that it does no good whatsoever to not forgive the only person that hurts is you. When you continually blame God and question His goodness, it will do you no good whatsoever. And it will only cause more pain and confusion and frustration in your life. So this week, do what Philippians tells us. In chapter 4, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but with prayer, bring your petitions to God with thanksgiving. Now, that sounds strange to actually thank God for what you're going through. I'm not saying, and I don't believe it's telling us to thank God for the situation or to thank God for what necessarily happened, but to thank God that He has a purpose behind your pain. You see, a lot of us think, wow, God just doesn't love me anymore. God let this happen in my life, and I'm so frustrated and angry because He let, let this happen. Instead, thank God that He's still in control, He's still on His throne, and He still has purpose for you. Stop with the entitlement of, well, I can be mad if I want to be. I can be angry at God. Look what happened to me. That attitude will not help you one bit. Instead, 
bring your prayers and petitions to God with thanksgiving. And then here's the promise. If you'll begin to thank God for the purpose and the peace that you're experiencing in the pain, here's what he says will happen. The peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, will be given to you. And that's what we need. I don't know how to help you, but God does. The people in this group, they don't really know what to say. They don't really know what to do to help you, but God does. You need His peace, the peace that passes all understanding to be applied to your life. So my suggestion to your group right now is this. Maybe during your share time, it became obvious that there was one or two people that really, really need to deal with this. Maybe it was in something they said. Maybe they got emotional and it just was obvious. The Holy Spirit's already spoken to your group and there's one or two people there that really need some special attention. Here's what I'd love for you to do. Find that one or two people, maybe it's even more, have them kneel down on the floor there and you guys get around them. Place your hands on them and pray specifically for God to give them the peace that passes understanding. It'll be a healing time if you'll go through with it. If you're the one who needs it, just simply bow in God's presence and let God's people minister to you. God loves you. God loves you so much. He gave His only begotten Son. He let Him experience the pain of the cross. He allowed Him to die for you. There was purpose behind that pain. And there's purpose in your pain as well. Trust God. He loves you. He wants the very best for you. And the peace and joy and rest that you need from this will only be found when you humble yourself before Him and thank Him for His goodness.